friends, welcome back to the Updike Family Homestead. Today we are making cranberry almond scones. Hey y'all, we are the Updike Family located in the mountains of Tennessee. We're excited to share our homesteading journey with all of you. From the farm to the table, we'll share the ins and outs, the ups and downs, from recipes and how-tos to our adventures of running a homestead. So come on in and join us. From our home to yours, welcome to the Updike Family Homestead. All right, let's just jump right in. So today, um, like I said, we're making some something a little bit different. Um, it's a, a nice little treat uh, for the family, and it's so delicious. I mean, a, sc a warm scone with that nice glaze on top is just scrumptious and so that is our plan today a few grocery items that you're going to need you're going to need two cups of all-purpose flour a quarter cup of sugar now i use the pure cane organic sugar uh, you're going to need heavy whipping cream cranberries almonds butter and you for the glaze you're going to need powdered sugar a little bit more heavy cream and you can use almond or vanilla extract. It's completely up to you. I am going to add in into my recipe just a little bit of almond extract. So let me grab that out. All right, so I've got my almond and my vanilla extract because I think if I'm gonna put almond into the batter, I don't want it to be too overpowering with the almond flavor, so I might just do vanilla um, extract in my glaze. All right, so let's just begin. You're gonna need two cups of that all-purpose flour, and I am using unbleached organic flour. You can use self-rising flour if you choose to. Now, keep in mind, if you're gonna use self-rising flour, you need to omit the baking powder and the salt because self-rising flour already has those things in there um one tablespoon of baking powder and this is bob's organic baking powder and then a half a teaspoon of salt of course i'm using my mineral salt redmond's real mineral salt and you're going to want to just kind of give that a little bit of a stir all right, now, there are two ways that you can do the butter. Um, it's four tablespoons of butter, and the first way is how I'm gonna do it, which is just cutting the four tablespoons up into smaller slices, and then using my pastry blender to um, kind of mix it all up together. The other way that you could do this is by taking like a cheese grater or a box grater and grating the butter directly into the flour. You can do either one, whatever's easiest and best for you. All right, so that was four tablespoons. I've got my pastry blender here and you're just going to Kind of like the same way that we do our biscuits. When If you've seen our biscuit video on how to make buttermilk biscuits, it's pretty much the same concept of cutting that butter into the flour so that you have about pea-sized pieces of butter throughout. So all of my butter has been uh, blended into the flour mixture, which is perfect. And now we are going to add in our cream. Now you're gonna need three quarter cups of cream and one quarter cup of sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my sugar really fast because I like um, using the same cup for multiple things. And you can put all of the cream in at once. All 
I would not substitute. You can, I, I guess. Um, I would not substitute the cream for like a whole milk. I would just do it. Um, I would just use the, the cream, the heavy cream. All right, so I'm gonna use a wooden spoon and I'm just gonna kind of give that a stir. All right, now we're going to add in a half a cup of cranberries. So my hands are kind of small, so it's about one and a half of my handfuls. <laughs> And then I'm going to say probably about a quarter of a cup of almonds, a splash of almond mm, extract. A little bit goes a long way with that. Um, and then I am actually using just blanched and slivered almond pieces, but you know, you can use. Like if you have something different that you would prefer to use, you're more than welcome to. Like maybe you want almond slices or maybe you want pecans or walnuts. This recipe, I mean, you could do multiple things. Ooh, I bet a lemon blueberry scone would be delicious. Now I've got my mind just going. I did forget to mention you're going to want to preheat your oven um, I'm using a gas oven so I'm going to preheat mine to 400 degrees if you're using a um, like an electric oven I would maybe go up to 425 all right now once all of that is mixed in nice and gooey it is time for us to form our mold here okay so you're gonna want to flour up your surface and I'm wearing a black shirt why I wear black when I'm doing baking I don't know I do this all the time though Ooh, I'm so excited the almond flavor um, is oh we're not flavor i guess the almond scent is really coming out and i think paired with these cranberries this is going to just be a really yummy dessert tonight and i'm actually making for dinner um something i've not made in a while but i was just i don't know you kind of get tired of having the same thing over and over again and so we are we're having um, kielbasa with potatoes and cabbage, and my husband isn't like a huge fan of cabbage, James, but he'll eat it every once in a while. So that's the plan. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do at this point is press out your dough. And I have a rolling pin here, let me move this bowl because here's where we start using some real strength <laughs> but basically we're going to roll this out into a rectangle as flat as we can get it What I want you to do after you get it as flat as you can pretty much get it, we're gonna fold it into thirds, kind of like a letter, and then fold it back this way, like so, and roll it out again. And then 
fold it again into thirds. And this time we're going to roll this out so that it's in a nice circle. back this up so that you can see okay so this is not a perfect circle but it's it's a pretty good circle of dough yummy delicious dough and I am covered in flour <laughs> oh man it's okay all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this into triangles um, and we're going to cook it on our pizza stone which I mean it's really it's just a, round, a circular stone pan but I think that it's perfect for cooking scones now you could do this like in a different way you could come in with like a biscuit cutter and do them that way I don't want to do that so actually, I'm going to put it on, I'm going to go ahead and transfer it onto my pizza stone and then cut it on that because I feel like it'll be a little bit easier ha, 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 look at that and then pull my pastry mat out. Look at that. It's beautiful. Looks like a little cake. I'm so excited. All right, let's go ahead and cut this baby. So I'm just going to use a pizza cutter because why not? I'm going to cut it in half. And then we'll go across. And then cut it so that you have triangles oh boy oh boy that is so yummy looking so I ended up with eight slices here mine will probably be a little bit thinner than a traditional scone but that's okay because you know, less is more sometimes. All right, so my oven has preheated, which means it is time to go ahead and throw the scones into the oven. And those are gonna bake for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer. 15 minutes on that and while that is cooking we're gonna go ahead and make the glaze that will go on top so for the glaze you're gonna need one cup of powdered sugar So there's my one cup of powdered sugar. You're gonna need one tablespoon, or sorry, two tablespoons of heavy cream. And one tablespoon of vanilla. You can also, you know, like, let's say that you were making like an orange flavored one, you could use orange extract. You could use almond extract, that's okay too. But I figure since I'm doing the, um, their almond, or I put the almond extract into the, mm. 
and that is super thick so I'm gonna add just a little bit more probably another tablespoon honestly of the heavy cream now you could use milk to do the glaze that's perfectly fine mm. well that's really good Okay, so there's my consistency. That's perfect. See how it does like drizzle um, off? Let me show you up close. That's how I want my glaze to be. Now you could honestly, if you wanted it to be a little bit thinner, you certainly can do that and just add in a little bit more heavy cream or milk. Typically when I do my glazes, I will use milk, but um, I've decided to try heavy cream this time. Oh yeah, they're smelling really good. All right, so we will be back when this is all ready. All right, guys, my scones are done. It took about 15 minutes in the oven. So total process, probably about 30 minutes to make this whole dessert. Um, and this is actually something that you could do for a brunch um, or just a snack, <laughs> if you're like me. All right, so if you look closely, they are nice and fluffy. Look at whoop, look at the inside of that. You know what? Nobody will know. Mm. Oh boy. Mm. It's so good. Mm. Okay. So we're gonna take our glaze and just drizzle all over. And these can actually, like you can leave them and if you want to reheat them um, in like the next day or two, you can definitely do that. Just keep them in the refrigerator and it'll, they'll stay nice and warm. Oh my goodness, Haley, look at that. This is so good. Mm -hmm. mm. And voila. Nice and hot. Look at that delicious scone. Well, that is an easy recipe, very quick, total time 30 minutes to get the entire um, from start to finish and the final product. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.